Hey everybody, they're really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Nor 9 Var Commons. We are still on the path of Nanami and Heishi, and we are doing this scary maze thing. And uh, we got all of the preliminary discussion out of the way, and we're just about to start. So you can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. And so the scary maze was started with these pairings. The pairs will go in the order they were drawn. First the Nijo pair, then the Moroboshi pair, the Toyo pair, and last of all, the Kagami pair will finish it off. Nijo started things off as he shot a cold gaze towards Kagami. Alright, we're in charge of the second floor. Let's get there before Sakuya and the others make it there. What's wrong, Senri? You're freaking out before you're even to the scary parts. Because I really don't like this. What am I supposed to talk about with him? Ichinose is paired up with Moroboshi. Huh? Now that I think about it, I've never seen you and Ron speak to each other. Of course! Why would I approach someone who's so shady looking that they wear sunglasses all hours of the day? Is that a pun? Shady looking because they wear shades? Sorry. I understand Ichinose's feelings on the matter. Moroboshi is a mysterious person. Plus, he never remembers anyone's name. Don't freak out so much about that. You'll be fine. Ron's a great guy. Uh, are you sure? Yeah, there's no malice in anything that he says or does. I think he's basically pretty similar to Kakeru. <laughs> Wrong thing to say, Heishi. Similar to Yuiga, then that means he's not anywhere close to being a good person. Huh? Really? From Motomoru's perspective, both Moroboshi and Yuiga are good people. I'm not trying to doubt his telepathy power, but maybe Otomoru's just got lower standards for what a good person is. We reached the center of the stairs so we could make our way up to the second floor. At that moment, that's... Grousing? I don't know what a grousing sound is. <laughs> but look at Heo Coder. <laughs> oh, it's just you two. I thought things had started already. Sakiya's team is almost here. Dang, that's awesome. It looks so real. Well, it is real. I know that you're tough to impress, but couldn't you act a little more surprised? She is surprised, right, Nanami? Yeah. Heishi, your communication ability is off the charts, and I bet you'd have no trouble finding a job even in my era. You can go ahead and take this will-o'-wisp here. What Sarata handed me was a small ball the size of a marble. It's neither glowing nor hot. It looks nothing like a will-o'-wisp floating in the air right now. This is set up so that when you throw it upwards, an accelerometer will ignite it upon its descent. Once it stops descending, it'll just be a marble again, so make sure you pick them up. Oh, and it can be used repeatedly, unless you break it. So try not to break them, okay? I don't really understand that, but you're a pretty amazing dude. I didn't make these on my own, you know. The Hyoko here helped me out a lot. Ugh. <sighs> I didn't expect to have to use such a complex science and engineering for such a silly task. But the will-o'-wisps you made are super scary. They're definitely going to scare the crap out of people. S shouldn't you be heading to your post instead of standing around praising me? Kakadu's going to get mad. Yeah, later, Sarata. Why is he blushing? <laughs> Maybe I should move closer to where the water area is. It might be scarier if they reflect off the water surface. Now he's getting into it. Alright, these should be good here. Man, that Sarata sure is some kind of something. I can't believe he made such great will-o'-wisps. Mm-hmm. He really must be from the future. The future? Oh yeah, he did say that, didn't he? I forgot because it was so long ago. I wonder what the future looks like. They're here. Sakuya got here pretty quick. <laughs> oh, man, Akito, 
You sure are a fast runner. I'm tired from chasing after you. J shut up! What the hell was that shining thing? Huh? It's obviously a will-o'-the-wisp. Oh hell no! It doesn't exist! I don't believe it! I'm never gonna believe it! If one of them appears again, I'll catch it and prove it to you. Er, says Akito. What should we do now? We can't use them if he's gonna try to catch them. I have already arranged for someone to deal with Shukuri. Huh? <laughs> Heal Ghost. That's... <laughs> How cute. Is it supposed to be a ghost? That size. Could it be... Oh, I wonder which one it is. Come on now. Reveal yourself. <laughs> Acknowledgement. <laughs> Akito, where are you going? That was a huge success. Heishi and I were able to successfully fulfill our duty as scarers. However, even we got the shivers from all the screaming we heard from the third floor. That was because the one in charge of all the mayhem on that floor was Yuiga, of course. The next group's our last one. It's Itsuki and Mikoto. Let's get sight! Yeah, but are you sure this will work? Of course! If we get Mikoto really scared, she'll definitely run to Itsuki for help. All Itsuki has to do is show her that he can be reliable, and then she'll fall for him. Fall for him. They probably should have talked to Itsuki about this ahead of time, in case Itsuki actually is a scary cat. My grandpa used to take women to a suspension bridge or something to try to get on their good side. It's basically the same move. Whoa, are you okay, miss? See? Mikoto's clutching on to Itsuki. Well... Kagami is stroking Mikoto's back in an effort to calm her down. I'd never seen that expression on his face before. It was such a kind and calming expression that it almost made me forget about his standard emotional state. Mikoto, you can relax. The expression that Kagami has on his face now is one that he'll only ever have with you. Hmm? What's wrong? Squatting down like that. I don't think we should watch this anymore. We should give them their privacy. Yeah, you're right. So it seemed like the advice Otomaru learned from his grandfather ended up proving to be valuable. This is so weird. None of what is happening is about me, and yet I'm filled with such happiness. I wonder if they're going to get married. Well, they're going to have to part ways when we reach our destination, so there's no way they can get married. Though, I do wish that they'd get married. <laughs> what? It's not guaranteed that we're all going to get sent to different countries, right? Nobody ever said that was for sure. Yeah, but... I'm sure the world isn't so evil. Maybe it'll let them be together if they request it. I doubt it. I mean, we're here to do something important. We're not here to play. But, I'd be glad if they end up together. Mikoto's power is amazing. The world uses our powers to maintain peace. So, it's possible that she'd get favorable treatment from the world. I think that would be great. You're such a good person. Once again, Otomaru's low standards for what makes someone a good person come into play. No, I'm not. This was all your idea. I only went through with it because you tagged along. This was all possible thanks to you. Itsuki and I both have a dream, and it's the same dream. Dream? I want a family. I'll marry the girl I love, we'll have children, and then I'll work super hard for the things that are precious to me. Well, I guess that's a pretty common dream. Otomoru relayed this information with a somewhat sad expression on his face. A dream of having a family, 
I wonder if it's really such an ordinary dream. I wonder if espers who have such inhumane powers can ever find even average happiness. Hmm. Otomaru's sad smile. Maybe he already knows the answer. Maybe he realizes that this ordinary dream of his lay somewhere far, far out of reach. Plus, my power isn't something as great as Mikoto's. All I can do is take away. His dream felt as distant as the stars that shone in the night sky. And according to the... I would have said I wish his dream comes true, but... The guide says to say I envy his dream. So, this way we go. I'm envious. Envious about what? Of the person who gets to be liked by you and stays with you forever. Th there's no reason to be envious about that. How come? Because you can, um, just be... Just finish it. Ah, I can't. If I think about this anymore, it'll all just leak out. But why do we continue to dream about things that have such a slim chance of becoming reality? That is the very definition of futile. What if we wish, anticipate, hope, only to have those dreams mercilessly torn apart? We continue to dream, even though we know these things won't happen. Maybe being unwilling to dream of those things that likely won't occur is a sign of weakness. We won't have to face despair without dreaming, but it also means we won't find happiness. You are a strong person. Huh? I'm not strong at all. Hmm. I wonder what my dream is. I wonder what it is I desire. Now that everyone's made it through to the end, that concludes the scary maze. Man, that was a blast. Hi. Yes, it was very fun and pretty. I'm happy to know you all had fun with it. We'll clean it up tomorrow, so let's just rest for the remainder of the day. I want to know what Kakadu had on his floor that had everybody screaming so much. Ah, I hope you guys all go straight to sleep, because everything's gonna stay set up as it is. You've been warned. Good night. Ah, oh, that means we're gonna go up to the top floor to see what he set up. With that, we all headed back to our own rooms to get some sleep. I have the room to myself tonight. It's Koharu and Mikoto's turn to share a room. I'm all alone tonight. Usually, I'd be able to fall asleep right away when I duck under my sheets. However, I'm having an unusually difficult time sleeping today. I'm still wide awake. The dream Otomoru was talking about, having a family and living peacefully. I wonder where I'd be when that dream of his comes true. When Otomaru pours out those emotions of his onto his special someone, would I be living the same way as right now, bound by my power? My chest starts to hurt. What's the reason behind this pain? Is it because I'm thinking of my hopeless future? Or is it... pain that makes me want to cry? This pain I was feeling was similar to a certain emotion I felt a while ago. Is this... Because I imagine that Otomaru likes someone else. Then I... Like Otomo... <laughs> My chest felt like it was pierced by something. I couldn't stay in bed. No matter how much I run, this pain in my chest wouldn't die down. Otomaru taught me his technique to feel more at ease. And that's... Nanami? Nanami? Why are you here? I immediately calmed my heart. I didn't want my thoughts to reach him. Although, even if they did, I didn't think they'd have any effect anyways. Hey, have you been hearing my voice? I haven't heard anything today. I, I see. That's good then. Or, wait, not good. All the stuff from the scary maze is still up, you know. It's dangerous for you to be walking around. The same goes for you. What are you doing? Me? I thought I'd play the flute for a little bit. Flute? Are you angry about something? Huh? Why do you say that? 
You told me before that you play when your emotions are intensified. Well, yeah, when my emotions are intense, but it doesn't mean that it's always got to be anger. I see. We don't really know what's down here, so you want to go up to the roof? Don't you think the roof would be worse because <laughs> Kakeru set it up? <laughs> yeah, I want to hear you play the flute. Yeah, that's cool. However... Otomaru suddenly turned and broke into a sprint. Only if you reach the roof before I do! Cheater! I chased Otomaru. He would sometimes glance back at me with an easy, laid-back smile. I darted up the stairs as fast as I could. As I continued to run after him, the pain in my chest finally went away. I realized the answer I needed. When I showed you those emotions earlier, was it all filled with just pain to you? Was it all negative emotion? They weren't all negative thoughts. It wasn't like that at all. I... I like... Back then, I don't think I was calm enough. I was probably too confused on this new emotion that he had just shown me, and Otomaru must have been unnerved a bit too. That's why I didn't realize what happened then. When he communicated his thoughts to me, his emotions stayed in my heart all through that night. Chapter 5 <laughs> Almost. So close. <laughs> I was ahead, right? Not even. I got here first. <laughs> I was obviously the one who won the race. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? The way you're taking this so seriously, you usually don't even have a drop of sweat on you. I touched my head, and my fingertip became moist. I hadn't noticed I was sweating until then. You really have good reflexes, huh? You had ninja training or something, right? I'm happy that I was able to knock you out of your usual nonchalant expression. Anybody would sweat if they walked all the way up here from the first floor. While we were racing up the stairs, Otomaru turned and looked back at me a couple of times. He smiled every time he did. Your expression was kinda cute. Tch, saying such weird things again. It's not weird, I just saying what I thought. Besides, even if I don't say it aloud, you'll still feel that I'm thinking it. That's true. But it feels different when he speaks things like that. Uh, are you embarrassed or something? I forbid you from using your power. I'm not using it. Your emotions just naturally flow into me. It, it's because you say such embarrassing things. You mean like calling you cute? I kind of feel like telling you my dream is much more embarrassing than that. Well, that's fine, I guess. Hey... So, what's your dream? Huh? It's unfair that I'm the only one who does all the sharing. Let me hear yours. My dream... I've never wished for anything for myself. My whole life, I've only ever done what other people told me to do. Listening to you talk about your dream made me realize that even having dreams takes a lot of courage. And I... I don't have that courage. Hey! What did you think of my dream? Why would he ask that? I'm not sure what to think of Otomaru's dream. I... I think it's great, because your dream is one that makes people happy. Nanami... What? You want to see the same dream as me? What do you mean? Same dream as Otomaru. I want a family. I'll marry the girl I love, we'll have children, and then I'll work super hard for the things that are precious to me. I... I'm... Well, 
what do you say? Are you seriously asking that? Of course I am. The words are something that I'll only say to you. I sent my feelings to you during that day, right? That was... At that time, you specifically said that you were showing me an example. What? Did I really say something like that? Yes. Uh, oh. Well, I kinda lied. I got shy. Those were my feelings for you. Everything I sent you was genuine, not an example. I... I love you, Nanami. I shut my eyes tightly. Otomaru's dream is to have a family. If I were to have the same dream as him, then that means I'll become part of his family? <laughs> I have both a father and mother, but I wouldn't say it's a dream of a happy family that Otomaru was searching for. All my father did was order me around. My mother, she would just watch it happen. But I feel like a different kind of family could be made with Otomaru. Huh, well I would have said I want to share his dream, but... The guide says to say I want to make his dream come true, so that's what I'll do. Why does it have to be so anti-intuitive? Counterintuitive, I mean. I bit down on my lips so that it would stop quivering. I am a woman. Huh? I am a woman, and that means I would be able to help make your dream come true. I'll make a family with you. Rather than try to search for my own happiness, I'd like to make him happy. I want to protect him from solitude. I'm not sure what he is thinking, but Otomaru suddenly pulled my body close to his. I quickly raised my head. O Otomaru. Shh. I sense something. Huh? I'm sensing murderous intent. Oh, that totally ruined the moment. Darn it. You wait here a little bit. I'll go and take a look. And it was at that... Actually, it would be better for Nanami to take a look because she's the ninja. And it was at that moment, Otomaru's embrace started to loosen. <laughs> Otomaru! Otomaru! Otomaru, what's wrong? Otomaru, snap out of it! <laughs> It's actually kind of refreshing to hear you speaking with that tone of voice. What do you think you're doing? Muraboshi! Man, it would have been great if they didn't notice us. This is all because you held up that gun. You... Is there another person here? At that moment, I remember that there was someone else who fit the bill. A man who has no right to be on board this ship. I thought you said this place was cleared out. <laughs> the person who appeared wasn't the person I had in mind. He was someone I'd never seen before. Who is this man? Well, yeah. Everyone was supposed to be asleep by now. Are you telling me that you summoned me for that tenuous of an opening? Hey, you're the one who said you absolutely needed to come aboard, so... I gave you the medicine, though. Did that really happen? Yes, I personally stuffed it into your luggage. Oh, yeah. So, I threw away my luggage before getting on the ship, because it was too heavy. Ugh. Who are you? Ron, who's the woman? Oh, she's some girl on the ship. You don't remember her name at all, do you? Answer my question, or else... This is... There's a dramatically heightened tension now. I feel like I have a knife to my back. As soon as he pointed that silver thing at me, its cold glint was enough to paralyze me with fear. From your reaction, I'm guessing that you recognize what this is. The way she carries herself, and her quick recognition of the situation. She's got to be the Shironoi kid, isn't she, Ron? Shironoi? That's supposed to mean something. Ugh. The Shironoi are a shinobi family that goes back for generations. 
but they have no purpose in the modern world, and they had become mere landlords in the countryside. But they experienced a bit of a restoration, thanks to the dark business of using that girl's power. Dark business? They would go around saving others from their pain and misery, or some such. Wow. How does he know about me? But all they were doing was using her powers to delete people's memories, which is something I'm pretty damn sure I went over with you. You did. The thing I'm having a problem remembering is why I ever joined forces with you. I have no idea who this person here is, and I have no idea how he knows so many details about my family. But one thing is absolutely clear, that is that he is my enemy, and the same goes for Motoboshi. I thought the traitor was Shukuri, but I'm totally wrong. Motoboshi is clearly the traitor. Ron, I thought I drilled this into your skull. The first thing you were supposed to do on board the ship was kill the Shiranui girl. I never really found an opening, though. People started monitoring me. In that case, I'll settle this right now. I don't know what that thing is, but there's no way I'm just going to stand still. I'll find my opening and attack. Wait, wait. I'll take this girl. What did you say? Erasing memories is a splendid power. It'd be such a waste to kill her. Splendid? What on earth is he talking about? It's not splendid. It's just annoying. You want the other girl, right? The barrier girl. So, you take one, let me have one. That's fair. Hey, you. You better not try and fight. The thing that Suiko is holding is called a gun. It really hurts if you get hit by it. In fact, it'd probably just kill you. And why should I listen to you, a traitor? I'll never forgive you for this. <laughs> That's a great expression. I like you, girl. <sighs> Sheesh. You got your heart set on grabbing a worthless power. Hey, it's better to have more pawns, right? I wouldn't mind seeing this power in action. If you're interested in it, I wouldn't mind giving you a demonstration. Well, well, well. The kunai isn't my only weapon. I'll just wipe all of his memories. For a moment, I had no idea what had happened. Something quicker than I could see slashed my hair and opened up a hole into the ground. Pungent smelling smoke billowed from that tiny opening. Don't just start shooting the damn thing. People are going to hear it. Who cares now? She's the one that made us use it. Well, that's true. <sighs> to think you'd step closer in the face of danger. I guess that means you can only use your power while you make contact. <sighs> Every power has its weakness. And in your case, it appears you must make physical contact with your target in order to use your power. Well, why not use your powers on that guy? He was able to immediately sense our presence. It'd be a real hassle if he woke up and told everyone about this. Erase his memories, starting from the moment we entered this room. Don't be an idiot. I'm not going to erase Otomoru's memories. There's no way I'd do that. Well, sounds like we'd better kill him then. No time to waste. Five, four, three... Wait! Two, one... All his memories from until... Your desperate expression was kind of cute. Nanami! You want to see the same dream as me? I love you, Nanami. Well, what do you say? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Otomaru.
Well, you're just gonna have to say it again. This light. Oh, how pretty. Ron, remember well. You remember what her power looks like. Yeah, if I see that pretty light again, I'll know what she's up to. Well then, well, I guess we should get along now. Uh, er, who cares about names? I couldn't protect him. I really don't have the right to love anybody, do I? I'm still erasing people's memories. I can't believe I erased a precious memory from the person I love. This is my punishment. Punishment for the crimes I committed before. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. What are you moaning about? Be quiet. No, it's just... I have something on my mind. Hmm. Heishi being concerned about something is as rare as the moon falling. You're actually quite mean, you know. He really is tough. Hmm. And you just agree with that? <sighs> okay, spill it. What happened? Well, that's the thing. I can't seem to remember. Huh? So, you're distressed over something, but you don't know what it is. No, that's not it. See, I met up with Nanami last night, but... She and Inoue. What were you doing just walking around with a girl in the middle of the night? Plus, didn't I tell you guys to go straight to sleep yesterday? I met her by coincidence. I tried to talk to her for a bit, and... Oh, I remember up to climbing up the stairs, but then I can't remember anything after that point. Maybe you tripped on the stairs and hit your head, and now you can't remember anything. Actually, my neck does hurt a bit, but my head is totally fine. Your neck, huh? I might be wrong then. Uh, I hope I didn't do anything weird, or something that got her upset. If you're worried, you should ask her directly. I mean, it's not like she lost her memories too, right? But she's not talking to me at all. She ignores my morning greetings, when we eat she won't even make eye contact with me. Even now, she went off somewhere to avoid me. I definitely must have done something in that period of time that I can't remember. I probably got her angry and... Uh, I want to apologize, but how can I really do that when I don't even know what she's angry about? I don't even know where she is right now. Uh, I'm screwed, aren't I? Seeing Heishi this depressed is also a rare occurrence. Hey, what's going on over here? The ship is drowning in Heishi's gloomy emotions. <sighs> Ugh, I feel like I'm going to catch his depression if I stand too close. Ah, oh, Mikoto, excellent timing. Heishi's depression is bringing everyone down. Can you do something about it? Like some tricks or monkey imitations? Oh, come on. Why would you ask me to do those stupid things? Okay, we're going to stop this video here and pick it up in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope to see you in some of my future videos. I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.